Please welcome to the stage Chris Jenner with Bloomberg's Caroline Hyde. Thank you for having us, yeah. Bloomberg. That Hi, is- everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good, Good morning. What a joy to be here to discuss your business, your success in content. But the world weighs heavy right now, and I know we just wanted to spend one moment thinking about how you have reamplified your daughter's voice today about how heavy your hearts are at this moment. And I know you've been speaking to friends and loved ones about the war between Israel and Hamas, and it must Mm -hmm. be something that you think about how you'd connect with your audience at this moment. Well, it is a horrible, devastating human disaster and tragedy around the world right now. Everybody's got a lot of fear. And um, I think that just to amplify what Kim said yesterday was just that our thoughts and prayers are with everyone right now. And like Kim said, check on your friends and your family members and anybody who might be. I know so many of our friends are so fearful. And so it's, it's hard. It's tough. You have built a powerful set of not one, not two, what is it, more than 20 companies that you're involved in through your family. Ultimately, you have kept your family (laughs) close at all stages. We brought you here because it says branding and business maven, but more than that. How much was your connection with a consumer, with an audience, with people in their hearts, brought ultimately from your early days in your childhood? You had sort of retail in your bones, the consumer in your bones. Well, I, you know, I started working in my grandmother's store when I was about 10 years old. So the, the DNA, if you will, that I had sort of um, in me at a very young age, I was, I, I grew up just a real people pleaser. And I wanted everybody to be happy and be proud of me. And when you start working at a young age, I was in charge, my grandmother had a candle store and I was in charge of the gift wrapping station. So I had a big job. And I was working all summer when my friends were at the beach. Yeah. I was at the store. And I think over the years of doing that and graduating to the cash register and, you know, interacting with the customers and then, you know, building my little retail entrepreneurial life when I was young and I was a teenager and working in retail stores, I think you do learn a certain amount of finesse with your audience, your customer, you know, talking to people and convincing somebody how to buy something. Yeah. You know, your your paycheck sometimes, you know, it involves how many sales you made that month if you're on a commission. And so, and then it it kind of developed a little bit of my competitive spirit. Yeah. Because I wanted to win and make everybody proud of my family proud of me, my grandmother proud of me, my mom proud of me. So, and just the inspiration of watching these women get up every single day and go to work. That was just our way of life. And in my family, we all worked. Mm-hmm. And that was just how it was done. And so I didn't really know any different. And I loved it. And my grandmother loved it. My mom loved it. And they're so proud. Of it. My mom, to this day, she's almost 90. And she talks about her work life and her career all the time because she loves to talk and we reminisce. And, you know, she t- well, what, you know and I listen to her and she just yeah. tells the same stories over and over. She loves them about her life in her stores in La Jolla. So there's work ethic there. Then came the power of persuasion. Then came the network that you built. What do you think the skill sets have been that you've really then to and who did you build them from? The network of people that I think I've been around. I think I um, was around so many powerful people in my entire life. From the time I got married to Robert Kardashian and had a whole ecosystem of businessmen and entrepreneurs and people running studios and you know any given day it would be the head of a studio and you know just often paid attention without really realizing I was paying attention and I had a very amazing education I was a housewife I was raising four kids at home I had the most blessed situation but at the same time surrounded by these business situations Mm. that I didn't even realize were happening right in front of me but I must have been absorbing it because there's so many times I've like, like brought up in my mind one of those conversations that I had learned from. And so I think I had a very lucky and blessed existence that way because it, 
brought me to some of the lessons that I've learned today. What I did learn from that is just being able to tap into some of those friendships and resources and business relationships that I had. And I think that if you look around, sometimes you don't realize what's right in front of you. Yeah. And I think that I, I am someone who loves to learn something every single day. And I love to reach out to the people. And even if I don't know someone, if they hold the key to some magic that I would love to learn about, yeah. I have no problem calling someone up and going, hey, can we have coffee or can we have lunch? I'm really stuck. And I don't know how to make this decision. And I need a little help. So did you call on that magic to Hulu, for example? How did those <laughs> sorts of conversations first erupt? Oh, is it that Hulu is... you go out there for that conversation, that magic? Or do they come to you now in this inbound moment, having crescendoed your your career over this time? You know, we had the most amazing experience at the E! Network with NBC, Comcast, and that whole group for many, many years. More almost, than 20 uh, yeah, seasons. Yeah, 20 seasons, over a decade of doing business and had the most beautiful friendship and relationship. And then I think it was just time to um, have a new chapter. Mm -hmm. And I really felt like streaming was in the cards for us and my family really wanted to try and um, tried to take a stab at that because that was really the future in our minds. We wanted to elevate what we were doing and, um, and streamline the show and have it have a new audience yeah. with, you know, it's now it's Hulu and Dis Disney Plus around the rest of the world. And the show's always been in so many countries and so many languages and we have such an amazing following and that transition for us we were very lucky because we kept that audience and gained new audience new friends and we still have a wonderful um, relationship over at E they're still airing some of our shows and so it makes it nice because now it's a much broader audience you keep saying lucky and it's interesting because it wasn't luck <laughs> that first brought you to thinking about infomercials, about seeing what perhaps you hadn't seen at the time, which was a champion you were married to that you wanted to had to le lean on that that relationship that Bruce at that time had with people who appreciated his sports, and then you led into infomercials, then suddenly it became linear television, then the transition to screening. How have you always been able to see basically where the consumer's going? I think I... I, I do like to lean into opportunity, and I do like to think about what the next thing could look like. And in those days when it was about, okay, we have bills to pay, kids in school, and things going on, and how is this going to happen? And I just had to really figure it out. And when I created Keeping Up with the Kardashians and brought it to Ryan Seacrest, and we brought it to E, and they said yes, and 30 days later we were filming, and I was just very persistent about the direction I knew I wanted to go in and I think we were prepared for, but it takes a village and I think what is so, I mean, when I say lucky, I, I feel lucky, I feel blessed to have opportunity that I can, you know, extract this amazing career out of, you know, and also share that with my family and they have taken this and run with it. You know, when you think about somebody in the entertainment business, usually they do it and they thrive and grow and perform on their own. And with me, we get to do it all together. Mm -hmm. It's not just one of us trying to do it all by ourselves and create this world for the whole family, but we all get to have a part in our our present and our future and what we're going to do. So there's lots of family meetings and we discuss what next steps are going to be. And the kids are, I mean, they're, they've got amazing work ethic and they never stop. So I feel like it, you know, it takes a village. It takes all of us together. And I think that's the magic. And it takes you on, I think, every single company. Was it more than 20 that ultimately have been born across from clothing to skincare, from now your own, you know, cleaning products. How do you ensure that you're remaining someone who sat at the table with a board presence, if you want it, for example, in private equity? What's the question? For example, how do you, ins are you always wanting to be integrated with every part mm -hmm. of the business mm -hmm. that happens with all parts of your ecosystem of your family? 
Um, I think that, do you mean how we decide who's going to run the businesses? Yeah, and in and terms how of that, you always having a presence within it. Right. Well, I mean, listen, I like to have a presence in the beginning and identifying what it is we're going to do, what makes sense, what the girls are really interested in and passionate about. There used to be a time where we would just throw spaghetti, you know, and take anything because we were learning and growing and, you know, lots of stuff didn't work out. But as we've grown over the last couple of decades, I think that we really do want to do things that we completely uh, enjoy mm. and that make sense and that we're passionate about, you know, because it, it's very difficult to do something that you're really not that into. So I think my job is to identify a company or a product or a business and then build, helping to build the team that's around that. Yeah. It's like with Skims, for example, I can use that. Um, Kim thought about doing a shapewear company for 10 years. And Kim and I were in Cannes, and she was with Kendall, and they were gonna do the red carpet. And I went up to get Kim, and she was leaning over a bathtub filled with warm water and tea bags, and she was dyeing her underwear and cutting it up. And I said, what are you doing? You've got to be downstairs in 10 minutes. You know, she goes, I've got it. And they're blow drying the stuff. She goes, this is just really what I want to do. And she did that for years. And then, you know, suddenly it was time to start this business. And so I asked the partners that we have now in Skims to come on board. Would they like to help us manufacture? Because I knew how to make makeup and yeah. beauty. I wasn't sure exactly how to make shapewear. You know, so I knew I had to find somebody who was great at uh, manufacturing clothing and running that kind of a company. So I think that's a good example of how we are, you know, our ecosystem and our process works. Mm. You know, we identify a business, we, you know, get it funded and try to get it off the ground, and then we find the best team of people to put around that company. When you said you threw spaghetti against the wall. A lot any, of it. A lot of it. Any regrets, <laughs> or was it always a learning process? It, I think all of it at the end of the day, you know, I look at everything as it was meant to be. Yeah. And it's always a learning process for me. Sometimes I, you know, like anybody else, I'll get frustrated and, you know, that something's not going perfect. But, it, you know, after all, you have to have these experiences to get to another level and to get to another chapter. And, yeah. Any kind of the way you turned down that you wish you hadn't? Um, no. I don't think so. I mean, there might be a couple, but I think at the at the in the end, it was the best thing because then later, years later, we end up doing it ourselves, or we doing mm. it with a partner that might be you know easier to work with or a better financial outcome or however you want to look at. It. There's always a you know a reason. And we were just talking about how the partnership was born with Hulu, and you decided this is the moment to yes. move from linear TV to streaming. Do you think a show is integral to the Jenna Kardashian family unit? I think that the show has always been an amazing foundation for everything else we do. We love doing it. We've had such an amazing relationship and experience with Hulu and Disney, and it's been so great. And we love what we do. And I think over the years we've been doing it for so long mm. that we have figured it out you know, like an easier schedule on some on some levels. And um, if one of the kids is a little burnt out, somebody else will do the heavy lifting. And our crew is so amazing. They're like part, I told you, backstage are like part of our family. And mm -hmm. we have such a great time doing it. And we all get to work together so that it's just a plus all the way around. But Hulu's been amazing. And I think that it's given us the chance to elevate the production value mm -hmm. and do some things that, you know, maybe we couldn't do um, before. So that's kind of fun. And build a new audience. And at, from that perspective, that's where you've navigated. You've thought about audiences. You've mm -hmm. gone, and, and how do you therefore think about the landscape of social media at the moment? Does, does one as a family have to have presence everywhere? Are you relatively thoughtful about which one you want to lean into at a certain moment or not? You know, that's a really good question because when we first started doing Keeping Up with the Kardashians, there was barely Twitter, mm. barely Twitter. There was Facebook and Twitter. There was no Instagram. There was no Snapchat. There was no TikTok, none of it. 
And so now I look back on that and I think, wow, that's kind of remarkable. I think that social media is, um, it's, it's crazy. It's, it's like fire. It can keep you warm or it can burn your house down. I mean, it's like so drastic. And I think about, for me, I could go on for hours about social media and my grandchildren and you know all you of worry? that. worry? Of course I worry. I mean, it's just such a negative place at times, but then it's such a great place mm -hmm. at times, and it's great for business, and it's an amazing focus group. It's like a built-in focus group. I remember when Kim first had her first fragrance, and she reached out to her folks on Twitter and said, do you like this bottle or that bottle? And they told her, and she did it, and it yeah. was a huge success. And I was like, wow, how did you figure that out? She taught the rest of us, how you know, my family, how to navigate through social media platforms. But... Now it's such a special tool, but it can be a little scary too for me. I mean, I'm just talking personally. I just think that for me, I have, I have almost 13 grandchildren, and that's a lot of little humans to worry about. So I How do. How do you think about protecting them in the next iteration of social media? Do you think it'll still be around when they're... I think and that it's always going to evolve. I think that I don't know what the next platform is going to be, but um, I think for them, they have definitely um, rules and parameters of how they, you know, use social media and, and when they're allowed to, to get on. My oldest grandson is going to be 14, so he has a cell phone and all of that. And they, I'm sure, look to you for parameters and for guidelines. Who do you look to for parameters, for guidelines, for mentorship? Who inspires you? I have some amazing friends who I've been friends with my whole since I'm 20 years old. You know, people like Tommy Hilfiger, and you know, just many, many people that have kind of done some of the things that I would love to do, and I'm so proud of, and businesses that they built, and they've kind of shown me the ropes on different things. But really, my true people that I look up to and get inspiration from is my mom, my grandmother, who taught me so much, my kids, who inspire me every day. I mean, they drive me crazy too, don't get me wrong. But, you know, it's just, I feel, I feel totally blessed to have this many grandchildren and kids and they keep me really happy. And the fact that you managed to find, I'm not gonna say it's balance, there is never balance, and I'm sure us <laughs> being voyeurs of your lifestyle, it doesn't look like much balance sometimes, but the fact that you've managed to weave together business with family means that at least you've always never having to worry about lack of time together. I'm interested as to whether you think ultimately that balance can continue going forward and what you would give your advice to other mothers who at the age of 50, because they need to, they, they embrace a new career trajectory, they decide on a new business. What would well, you say to them? I think that's really interesting when you say decide because yeah. it is a, it's a decision that one makes. For me, I had to figure out how I was going to make a living. Mm and pay bills and create a lifestyle and a life for my kids that I was happy and proud about. And that meant figuring it out. And I started filming my show when I was 52 years old. When you think about that and all the time that in between, you know, it's crazy when I think about how old I was and how I just I don't young, know. As the case may be, depending on. I I know I know it seems it seems very young now, <laughs> but at the time I thought, oh, here we go, we're going to start a whole new career, and I Courtney and I had a children's shop, and um, I thought this show is going to be so great. We are going to sell so many T-shirts. <laughs> I mean, when I think about that, I was so happy. I thought, oh, and then the show did great, and we couldn't even go to the store. <laughs> because it, what you we didn't have security, we were going to get bombarded. But um, I, I feel like our journey has been one of learnings all along. And yeah. When does it stop? I mean, you Oh, already... just to say one more thing. Yeah. Anybody that wants to start a career, if you're 52, if you're 62, if you're 102, I think it, there's nothing more beautiful than that. Mm -hmm. to be able to have that kind of just energy and it keeps you young and creative and 
and feeling worthy and worthwhile and your self-esteem goes up and just having a schedule and all of that. There's so many things I could go on about, about um, just yep. mental health, physical health, spiritual health, you know, just all of that and how great that we all felt to be having those opportunities come our way and really going out and searching for them. Do you ever wake up not motivated? Yeah. And what do you do? Yeah, I go back to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> We're still someone who wakes up at what, 4 or 5 a.m.? Like, I do. To give a nice I do. Listen, if I wake up at 4 sometimes and I think, oh, I just can't do this, and then I go, you know, how you go back to sleep, and then you look at the clock, and it's like 6.50, and I'm like, oh, my God, I overslept. So, yeah, so I'm just sort of silly. But do you guys wear an aura ring? Anybody wear an aura ring? I started wearing an aura ring, and now it's become this little obsession. Oh, competitive. I am so competitive with myself. Today, I think I got, I got an 87, and I was so mad I didn't get a 90. And <laughs> On your Kim will call or me. your restful? Um, well, the, the restful part, I'm just a lost soul. But the <laughs> sleep, I can at least excel at. So that's what I concentrate on. Okay. And that tells you a lot about my personality, because I just want to concentrate on the things that I actually <laughs> can do OK at and just try my best for the next night. But Kim beats me every night. <laughs> it's so annoying. That's the competitive instinct. That's right. Uh, we've run out of time for one thing that after a day where you haven't felt motivated or you've done a million and one things within mm -hmm. 20 hours. Mm -hmm. What do you do to relax? I like to be, I actually, okay, I just planted a vegetable garden, Chloe and I, because we live next door to each other. And it's really great. But when you plant a vegetable garden, you don't get like millions of vegetables the first week or two. You get, it's getting started, little bits here and there. And so Chloe and I are splitting the little bits. So it's getting kind of funny because I'll go over and steal some of her bits and she'll <laughs> steal some of mine. But what I love is being, I do love doing things that are creative and, you know, design things. The vegetable garden makes me happy. Being outside makes me happy. Going on walks makes me really happy and clears my head. And just being with the kids. Uh, sometimes I go to bed very like five nights a week and I'll count how many grandkids I got to see that day like if I go to Chloe's house and she's having a pumpkin carving party and there's six grandkids I'm like I'm halfway there <laughs> <laughs> it's like I, I have a competition with myself okay well you're about to add a 13th so yeah congratulations with that thank you thank for spending you. some time amid your family times so I hope you get to few, see a few grandchildren when you head off today thank Please you do so give it much. up for Chris Jenner thank you Thanks, you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.